Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. 608, Wednesday, July 13th. 69 degrees, get up to 83 today. WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. News Talk Radio, streaming live on the Radio Pop app and WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160. Join the conversation. We are now joined by Karen Homick. She is the... Principal at the Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Performing Arts Academy, conveniently located on uh, the uh, on the Air Force Base. I'm sorry, Lakehurst at the Naval Base. So in uh, in Hangar One. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me here this morning. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Karen, why don't you give everybody kind of a quick overview of what the Performing Arts Academy is all about? All right. Uh, the Performing Arts Academy is a high school in Ocean County, um, public high school ninth grade through 12th and we provide enhanced training with practical skills for higher education and or a professional career in the arts um, I love what I do my staff is amazing and uh, our students are extremely talented we're a school of choice so there's a shared passion by the student body and the setting is contagious the students are having fun doing what they love to do while they're getting a uh, fantastic education that's we awesome. Have, right. We have four majors. We have acting, voice, dance, and now uh, audio engineering. Very cool. Okay. So uh, so this is a full-day program, right? And uh, and how many applications do you get typically? Do you accept everyone or, or no. how does that work? No. We have, um, we've been getting between 150 to 200 applicants, and we accept 75. So we have a, the first part of the uh, selection is academic testing. It's more like a placement test, so we see where you are. Uh, we look at your transcripts, and we then have auditions. And our auditions are done by professionals in the field, not the staff. So it's, it's, it is a process that takes at least two, you know, two times that you have to come in. But um, then from there, we, you know, we look at all the scores, and we pick the top 25 in each major. Very cool. Right. This year we'll be doing probably this coming year 20 in each major because we now have the audio engineering major. Very cool. And so you end up with a really talented group of kids. And, uh, you know, I have been uh, I've been fortunate enough to be at uh, graduation uh, for the last couple of years and seeing these kids. This is it's such a. Di- it, I'll tell you what is the. It is the. It is definitely the most different graduation of any of the graduations probably in Ocean County, uh, because it's a. It's a diverse group of kids that definitely have a, a personality uh, unto themselves. But when you hear them kind of retelling their four year experience, it really is special, right? It. They're just happy to be in a place where they can, you know, explore their passion. Um, every year we have the new student orientation, and we always ask a few students to come in to help bring the students to the black box. We had to tell people that they couldn't come because half the student body wanted to come. They couldn't wait to get back to school. August was like they were like jumping just to get back to school in September. So uh, it's a place where uh, most of our guests are shocked because they said they've never seen so many people when they enter the door smiling. And I think that says it all. They they they're in a place where they're comfortable, they're happy, and they're exploring their passion. So it makes the learning so much more, uh, much more fun. Right. And so, Karen, how did you get involved with the Performing Arts Academy? Do you have a background in the performing arts, or how did that happen? Um, I started off with the district in 1997 as an English teacher. I was 12 years old at the time, and uh, <laughs> right. um, anyway, I gradually worked my way up, and I became principal, and my first job was in, um, I, was pr- I was an English teacher for the Performing Arts Academy for a short period of time, and then once I became principal, I was moved to the Jackson Center, our vocational school, which is just, I, I want to say that I have one building, but we have six buildings that are unbelievable, right. the, and the learning that takes place in all of our buildings, but anyway, back to me. <laughs> um, the um, Then after five months at Jackson, um, Mr. Hoy, our superintendent, felt that um, I would be best suited at the Performing Arts Academy. So I've been there since 2005, and okay. we have grown beautifully. 
Well, you have grown, and so in 2014 uh, became a blue ribbon school, right? So why don't you tell everyone a little bit about what that means? What's in what's entailed in becoming a blue ribbon school? To be a blue ribbon school, the Department of Education um, s- says that you are a learning institution of the finest quality, and um, you know they look at how you increase how in your scores and your numbers. At that time, it was the HESPA. Now we're looking at park scores. So all of these things, the government looks in your attendance, and they just saw that our school just kept progressing. And we, um, our sister school, Mates, was recognized, I believe, two years before us. And um, we really worked hard as um, as a school community. Um, you know, we changed things up. We we you know we started off with just having regular English one, two, three, four, math, algebra, geometry. Now we have honors levels in all of our classes. We have AP classes. We have college articulations. So we've really um, worked hard on the academics, and the students just thrive. So we've been very fortunate. Right. Right. And and so the PAA is one of only three blue ribbon schools in all of Ocean County, right? Um, two of them are Two of them are high schools, and one of them is an elementary school, and the other... The other high school, of course, is Mates uh, right. down in Manahawkin. So mm-hmm. uh, that's cool. Right. We're um, in good company. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. So, so Carol, when you, you know, getting back to like you for a second and, and your path, uh, when you were, how did you decide originally that you wanted to get into education? I mean, how did you kind of uh, happen down that path? Um, it's funny that you should ask that question. When I was, when I was younger, um, my father asked me, "Did you, you know what do you want to? Why do you want to go to college?" And I said, "Well, you know, I want to work in the business world." And he said, "Well, you don't want to be a nurse?" And I said, "No." And he said, "You want to be a teacher?" I said, "No." And he said to me, "Well, then you shouldn't go to college." Right. So it was back then. It was very. It was odd that I didn't want to. So of course I did my own thing. I went to school for business, and then I worked in the corporate world. And I said, "I I love children. I want to be with kids." So I went back to school, and. Um, I just earned my education for teaching, uh, for secondary education, and it was the best thing. I have five children of my own. Um, there's really not much they can put past me in school because I've gone, I've seen right, it all, right. I've done it all. I've, so um, I, I get a kick out of some of the things that they think they can get away with, but um, kids are kids, and I just love being with kids. So, so did, you, did you have that kind of uh, aha moment, that kind of epiphany after you had your own kids? Or was it before when you realized that you love kids? I mean, you started out in the really in the I want to say the for profit, you know, business world. Right. And then to kind of shift gears like that. I mean, do you remember what it was? Was it one day that you were just like doing it? And you're like, what am I doing? I, I want to. I mean, how did that? How did I that went go? back to school um, when I was still in the corporate world before I even got married. Yeah. I just said that. What did I do this? You know, why did I do this? You just weren't I, happy. I, you know, no, there's I, there, I wasn't. And I was really shocked at what happens in the business world. So <laughs> I was, uh, I was, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go back to school, and I, I did that before, you know, before I got married. So it really had nothing to do with once I right. had kids. But then, once I did have kids, uh, it just became, you know, more realistic to me right. that this is what I really wanted to do. So, so that was a bold move. So, so out of curiosity. When when you went back to school, did your dad did your dad kind of snicker and say, "I told you so," or had that? No, go? he was good. My father, <laughs> he was a great man. He just uh, actually anything I did, he would smile. Oh, so that's he cool. Was, he was uh, he was good. He was he was very proud of anything that I did. So that's good. Uh, He's a better man than I, I am because I'm sure I would have said to my kids, "See, I told you. Why you got you got to go into the business world? That's, that's you want to be your own person." That's so when, funny. When we come back, uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the kids. Right at the PAA, and where at you know where they kind of end up, how that how they kind of break down, and and uh, you know uh, I think there may be a little bit of a misconception that that all these kids end up uh, uh, auditioning um, uh, nonstop for Broadway shows. So we'll talk about that. Karen Homick, uh, Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Performing Arts Academy. Back after this. Stay tuned for Preferred Company with Joel Markell and Marianne Levy at 8. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin continues next. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Now, back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310 and WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin, Karen Holmick. We are talking uh, Performing Arts Academy Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Blue Ribbon School 
here uh, located on the uh, on, at Lakehurst, right? So, uh, you know, again, one of the things that I'm always also um, really shocked about is, so how many kids graduated in this year's class? 66 okay. graduates this year. 66 graduates. And how many, just as a, for perspective's sake, how many started in, in as a freshman? Um, I would, I would say we had 70 that started. Okay. So, so we lost four along the way, which is, um, we possibly could have lost maybe five or six along the way because we do accept at the sophomore year as well. The, after the sophomore year, okay. we don't accept, but, um, it's uh, it's not for everyone, and I think you know when you're a freshman, if you decide that it's not for you, that's that that's a good choice for you to go back to your sending sure. school. Sure, I'm sure because I think there's probably a perception that oh, this is going to be great. I just do performing arts all day, right. and then they realize no, no. There's also math and English right. and history and all the stuff that you have to do Correct. as a as a regular Correct. high school kid. And um, you know our curriculum is rigorous. So, um, and being that we are a small school. You don't fall through the cracks. So if you're right. not doing your homework and if you're not participating, uh, phone calls are made home. Parents are known, right. are told about everything. So it's it's um, it's not that easy to um, just to be, you know, to get an average grade. Right. You have to really work hard to get that, that average grade where you can really excel if you follow the plan that we have in place with the teachers academically. Right. So uh, so the 66 kids, uh, what I'm always amazed by is I, I, I sit there and I look at the program um, on graduation day and I look at the kids that, you know, belong to um, to the different honor societies. And and uh, some of them are like there's I know that there's like a uh, so what are the different honor societies? Because there's different uh, there's different like uh, performing societies as well right so what do you have well there's national honor society right and then there's the national honor society for dance right and then we have the in the ITS the international thespian society wow okay so there's a lot of different a lot of different uh kind of gold rings to go after correct but 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 as an example how many kids this year or what percentage of the kids were national honor society uh, at least a third. Okay. At least a third. So a third of the kids, think about that. Think about that in our in the rest of our schools. If we had, you know, if you had a graduation uh, class of, of, of 450 kids and you can get 150 National Honor Society kids, I think most of our principals would be pretty darn happy, right? right that's right. that's a pretty good group. And and of those 66 kids, what was the ballpark? How many, how much in scholarships did they receive? They were offered oh. over $7 million in scholarships. Wow, $7 million in scholarships. So I am no great mathematician, but I'm going to say that's somewhere in the area of like a hundred and, I don't know, $20,000 per kid. Right. Right. Th that's yeah. that's pretty uh, that's pretty impressive. Right. right. And our guidance counselors are fantastic. They start the path for a college uh, as uh, when the students are freshmen. They get them on Aviance and they and they get them to to learn how to use it, to learn about the different colleges and what's going to be available. They work with our students one on one. So they're very fortunate. And the scholarships that are um offered are always given we we send them home not only to the students but to the parents as well so we try to keep everyone informed and give them the best possibility of getting as much money cuz college is huge anymore right right um and so so there you go so you have so you're giving out we're giving out lots of money right and these kids what 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 kind of schools uh some of the schools that they that they're going to uh college wise we have students that um, I'm always happy to see them going to um, our our state unit, our state colleges, Montclair, right. Rowan, Kane. Um, uh, uh, what's the other one? Um, Stockton. Right. Um, those are the big ones. Rutgers. We have a lot going there, but we have our our usual amount going to Marymount, NYU. Um, Berkeley, right? Uh, for those that want to travel, um, Philadelphia School of the Arts. So you know, they they it, the ones that want to stay local, they they stay local and they have no problems getting in any of these schools. Great. So when we come back, we're going to give you your magic wand, right? So you can make an impact. I also want to know, uh, can you give us maybe a preview of what's coming up in the upcoming season? What's going to be performed? I sure uh, can. That's exciting. Uh, Karen Homick from uh, Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Performing Arts Academy uh, talking more with us after this. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin.
Coming up next, the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square New Jersey News Network and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from the Jersey Shore to the world. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pup app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Hey, welcome back. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin, 633 Wednesday, July 13, 69 degrees. Get up to 83 today, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. News Talk Radio streaming live on the Radio Pop app and WOBMAM.com. 732-505-1160. Join the conversation. We are joined now in studio by Karen Omick. Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Performing Arts Academy principal. Good uh, morning again. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome <laughs> back. I hope you enjoyed the break. Uh, so uh, we were talking a little bit about uh, what kind of what what can we expect. So so I'm not going to lie. I super look forward to the musical every. So okay, I'm I'm okay with drama. All right, I'm okay with it, but. But I'm not going to lie, it's not nearly as much fun as the musical. So what do we have to, first of all, what did we just have this past year? What was the musical this past year? This past year, we had Cinderella. Yes. Our students uh, performed Cinderella, and it was absolutely beautiful. It was, I mean, we had sold out performances at the Strand Theater in Lakewood, and that's a very big theater to sell out. Um, we had a special luncheon with the characters and that was another great yeah. afternoon because we had our cosmetology um, students do makeup and hair for some of the little student, the little children that came to see the show. Yes. They did our, a great job on me, by the way. Oh, they I was did very a great job. Well, they should have worked on me a little bit. <laughs> um, this is great about radio, though. No one sees That's what I right. look like. That's right. <laughs> anyway, and um, then we had our culinary program prepare a lunch. So it was just uh, it was the whole school coming together. Our sets are are professionally built by one of our programs, the carpentry program at the Jackson Center, um, and we have a professional orchestra. and Our music is amazing, and because the students are so talented, our shows are are just are just great. Yeah, and just to just to put an exclamation point on that, I went to see the understudy performance, which I think was the Saturday matinee, right? Yes. And my kids, when we walked out, they were like. That was the understudy performance. Like mm. they were like, "Wow, that was really great." So uh, fantastic. So what do we have? What's on tap for this year? This year we are going to perform Sister Act. Nice. Yes. Nice. We're excited about that. Um, That's the Whoopi Goldberg movie. Right? Yes. Yes. So we, uh, the students, uh, were very excited to hear about that. We don't tell them until the last day of school what the musical is going to be until the following year. So they, you know, I knew when they announced it because I heard this huge scream. <laughs> so uh, they knew we were doing Sister Act, and um, again, it will be. Let me get the dates of that one. The it's February twenty third, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth. And our February twenty third performance is a dress rehearsal for the senior citizens in our area. And tickets are sold at a reduced rate, and a free box lunch is provided once again by our culinary students. Wow! So it's um the and um they're professional. Um, people are amazed. We've done thoroughly modern Millie, Into the Woods, um, Cabaret, Shrek, Les Mes. We've done um, all different types of musicals, and every time we do one, the the our audience is always amazed at the professionalism. Right. Right, it's really great, and I'll tell you what I. This was the first year that I started going to these shows, and I, I've, I've been going for a couple years now. But this is the first year I went that I actually started to tear up a little because I was looking around and looking at the parents and watching the parents watching their kids, and it's really just such a touching thing, and it's it's uh it's kind of beautiful to see, uh you know, uh, families so proud of of their kids who are up there and and just. So professional and so uh, so uh, you know with such poise uh, to go do what they do. So it's fantastic. Uh, and of course, we always have a drama, but we're not going to talk about that right now because I'm, I'm all about the I'm all about the musical. Right? Well, just to plug okay, the drama, go though, I'm going to tell you the the date. It is in November. It is um, at the Jay and Linda Center for the Arts on the Jay Ocean. Jay and Linda Grunin Center for the Arts. I'm sorry. Come on, get the, uh, the Grunin Jay and Linda Grunin Center for the Arts. You're right. <laughs> 
Um, and um, that's on November 18th and 19th. Okay. So, and then also we are going, we always have our holiday vocal, our vocal students and dance students perform at the Jay and Linda Grunin Center for the Arts. Um, and that is, those are two amazing nights. Um, everyone walks out smiling. It really gets you in the holiday seat. Um, you know, it gives right. you that good feeling. Right. And so if you want to get a flavor for what the Performing Arts Academy is all about, that's really the way to go. And mm -hmm. I really recommend if you have if you have young children, um, you know, uh, really any age uh, up, you know, in, through middle school that are considering that really have an aptitude to really enjoy the arts. Uh, it's really a great way to engage them and bring them and let them see the show or let them see some of the things the Performing Arts Academy is because it really sets them on the right path. Uh, that they may say to you, hey, one day they want to, this is where they want to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's a great program. So, Karen, uh, we've come to that time of the show uh, where we hand you the magic wand, the magic uh, fairy dust, the pixie dust, the ability just to wiggle your nose and make an impact. Uh, Karen Homick, principal, uh, Performing Arts Academy, Ocean County Vocational and Technical Schools. What are you doing with that magic wand? Um, I guess I would like to change the perceptions um, of what people think um, the arts is all about and um, that it's a dead end for students after they finish high school. And that's, it's, that's so not true. Our students excel in college because of the skills that they learn um, at the Performing Arts Academy. They just don't learn how to sing, act, and dance. They, they learn how to be, um, you know, how to to public to to be a better public speaker than I am, obviously, um, <laughs> they're uh, very comfortable in their skin. And uh, we have students that are. I actually have students that are um, right now own businesses in Ocean County, dance studios, competition studios, vocal studios. I have uh, I have students in medical school. I have students in law school. Um, with all of the skills that we taught them, um, they're excelling. Some of them choose to keep their majors. Um, uh, they take the arts as a minor because they want to keep that as part of their lives because they feel that it, it has helped them. Uh, it brought them to where they are. So, um, I mean, I have students that work for the Jets uh, right. uh, actually doing recruiting. Um, I mean, there's just so many possibilities out there and skills developed over four-year period that they can apply to all all aspects of life. Uh, and it's a great point you brought up that one of the most amazing things and as a as somebody that used to be employ employ kids at a huge level when I was in retail and health clubs, um, it amazes me how many kids graduate you know high school, graduate college, and come to an interview process and they stumble all over themselves, right? Because they don't know how to speak, they don't know how to how to present. They they're not they're not comfortable. They don't show that that um, they don't show that confidence that mm -hmm. employers are so looking for sure. in their teams, and that is something that is not. Uh, that is something that's not an issue for so many of the performing arts right. kids. They are so comfortable with themselves. They walk in and they they would own that interview process. Right. And so that's a that's a fantastic uh, skill that you point out there. Well, we do have professionals um, in the majors that do come in and um, give them mock interviews to help them prepare for auditions, whether it be for the, in the professional world or for college auditions. So we do uh, we do that with Very all of the cool. students, yeah. Very cool, Karen. Where could folks learn more about the Performing Arts Academy? How could they learn more if they wanna if they wanna figure out how they can participate? They can go on to our Facebook page. They can go on to www.ocvts.org and just uh, click on to Performing Arts Academy. We you know we put on our performances, our shows. Uh, for anyone that's in a, in middle school, in eighth grade, we visit many of the schools to tell them about us. But if you are not one of those schools, uh, we do have information sessions that are coming up. And again, they're going to be at the Jay and Linda Grunin Center for the Arts. Um, those dates are November 2nd, November 17th, and November 19th. Um, you can look at the our um, our homepage and you can see the times of those um, of those visits. But um, they're also very, um, you know, we give you a lot of information um, on that day as well. Very cool. Karen Homick, uh, Principal, Ocean County Vocational Technical Schools Performing Arts Academy. Thank you so much for spending some time with us and dropping some knowledge on us this morning about the performing arts in Ocean County. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Back with more after this.